Now that this two and a half page printed transcript from Malaysia Flight 370 has been released, there is still plenty of criticism about why investigators uh, are still not knowing exactly who was speaking. Officials have also been criticized for incorrectly reporting details of the conversation. CNN's Martin Savage has been our source for really uh, understanding the, the inner workings of a Boeing 777. He joins us uh, from that flight simulator with flight instructor Mitch Casado. So, gentlemen, um, help us understand just these transmission from, you know, the cockpit there down to air traffic control uh, and, and from everyone I've talked to pilots and experts, you know, looking at the transcript, they said nothing unusual here. Yeah, it does look fairly normal. I got to say, you know, even before this transcript came out last week, Mitchell and I decided to with the simulator run through everything. We knew of 370 going from waiting at the taxi or at the gate, the passengers loading, then the pushback, the taxi out the runway, the takeoff, everything. And pretty much it came out exactly the same. I won't say we used the same radio calls, but almost almost to the same step by step. So it doesn't seem out of the ordinary, with the exception that Mitchell found one point towards the very end, 101.14 in the morning. The airline reports in Malaysian 370 maintaining flight level 350, meaning 35,000 feet. And then just about six minutes and 40 seconds later, repeats it. And that seemed a bit odd, didn't it? Yeah, it's a little odd only because there's no indication that they switched frequencies. Now, if they said contact another center and report your altitude, of course, you would right. expect that. But on the same frequency for a second time, after the first time they were acknowledged, that's a little odd. Yeah, they weren't prompted in any way. So that's the only oddity we could find. Okay, uh, the only oddity. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much because I want to talk specifically about the forensic investigation really looking into who uttered the, those last final words now that we know it wasn't exactly good right, good, uh, all right, good night. It was something else. Um, Tom Fuentes, let me bring you in, our law enforcement analyst and former FBI uh, assistant director. Uh, from a, Tom, from a you know, criminal investigation perspective, how exactly, using voice analysis, how, how does one figure out who was speaking? Hi, Brooke. Well, in a case like this, I mean, you can bring in, uh, you know, companies that do that kind of work. The government does that kind of work. But really, you know, you have a small company here, a small group of pilots and air traffic controllers that would pretty much, they should be able to recognize the voice pretty easily of the captain and or the co-pilot. Now, some of the voice recognition software applications, uh, it becomes a little more difficult when the speech is short uh, not long sentences or paragraphs like you have here, just quick radio messages back and forth. Also, the, the chances of having it garbled, ambient noise in the cockpit behind, the sound of you know motors or engines or bells or whistles or whatever, um, also would interfere with that. So really, um, you know, there is uh, software out there. There are applications. They're not 100 percent, but uh, in this case, just the uh, humans that know both guys listening to their voices would probably be just about as effective. Uh, and then deducing if it's not one of those two guys, realizing it would be this this third party, and then you know it begs the question, well, who would that be? Well, when they are listening, Tom, and, and you mention ambient noise, what about other factors, things you can't really see when you're reading a transcript that you can hear, like I don't, fear or, or stress, um, mumbling from, from either a co-pilot or a pilot? Well, a couple things with that. First of all, um, you know, the recording is from the ground when the microphone is keyed and they're receiving. This is not the uninterrupted voice cockpit recording that you would hope to have later from one of the black boxes. So that's a little bit different. Right. Secondly, in terms of stress, you know, it's acknowledged that the co-pilot is making his first ride without a check pilot and he's now riding with a very experienced captain who he may look up to and may want to impress so the idea of being nervous in that situation you know it may not reveal you would expect a certain degree of stress just mm -hmm. the situation for that pilot what about background noise what could they what could they gain from hearing that well if there's some kind of warning bells or or fire alarms going off but again you know, you would have the uh, the co-pilot or pilot keying their microphone to speak to the ground controllers, and then with the idea that during that five-second transmission, the ground might be able to hear something mm -hmm. in the background that might sound like a fire alarm. It'd be pretty hard to imagine, imagine making a calm, you know, okay, good night, or mm -hmm. uh, you know, normal transmissions when when alarms are going off in the cockpit. Mm -hmm. 
There, there, it sounds like there is a lot they could be listening for. We may never hear this, but let's hope investigators are listening to it over and over and over. Tom, no, that's true. Tom Fuentes, former FBI, CNN law enforcement analyst, thank you, sir, very much.